Some other methods are using frequency conversion. And so the frequency of a signal can be shifted by multiplying it with another sinusoidal signal. We've seen this in our transmitters many times. So we can take a signal A cosine omega nt, multiply it by cosine lot, and we end up with the sum and the difference frequencies, as we've seen before for the transmitters. The multiplication, as we've talked before, is performed by a mixer. The oscillator is called a local oscillator. And we're going to use a low-pass filter to remove, typically, the high-frequency spectrum that comes out so that we're left with just this low-frequency component. Let's talk about the homodyne receiver, which is a special type of uh, single-stage frequency converter. What's key is, is it uses the same carrier as the transmit to down-convert the signal. It provides coherent detection because it's using an LO that's synchronized with the transmit. And it translates the spectrum to DC. So the key here that I want to point out, I don't want you to miss here, is these two are the same. Or at least the center frequency is the same. So if here is our carrier and black is our spectrum, if we multiply it by an LO that is omega C, it takes this on either side and it plunks it down right there at omega equals zero. And then all we have to do is put a filter to get this out. And so this is a pretty simple uh, conversion technique because it takes us right down to baseband. The benefits of the homodyne is it has significantly reduced system complexity. And this is because you've got a single mixer um, and you've got a single filter at low frequency. And we'll talk a little bit later. But basically, the lower in frequency you do your filtering, the easier it is. Um, and the baseband signal is directly readable because it's at DC, and you have high selectivity because you're filtering at a lower frequency. Uh, the disadvantages is your LO leakage can actually cause uh, a self-mixing. If the LO mixes with itself, it's just going to create a DC offset, and that offset can actually be much larger than your actual signal. And the other problem is, is you need to create a precision coherent local oscillator that matches your incoming signal, and that typically uh, involves uh, a phase lock loop and maybe some digital signal processing to figure out what your incoming signal is, what it phase and frequency is, and to match it exactly. So that can be a little bit complicated. Uh, it's very practical today for software radios because the ADC basically takes in the signal and then we're going to do all of our filtering and uh, literally down conversion uh, in, uh, in the digital domain. Just a historical note, this was actually developed after superheterodyne. So we'll talk in, in the next module about advanced architectures and superheterodyne. And one might think that the more advanced architectures came later on, but in reality, homodyne came after it. And they, what they were trying to do is build a better and simpler radio. So let's move on to the next type of single frequency conversion. This is the heterodyne receiver. And by down converting an RF signal to a lower intermediate frequency, so that means not to DC, but to an intermediate frequency, we can have better selectivity and we can improve our SNR. And so the idea here is that we take our incoming signal and we down convert it with an LO, and in this case, it is not equal to our input. And what this does is it puts our input signal at a lower frequency that allows us to basically process that signal in an easier format. And I'll just point out, as you can see here with this note, that the bandwidth of this filter after the mixer is what determines our noise. If you're wondering what KTB is, we'll talk about it in a couple of future lectures, but it's actually the power level of the white noise. And so we can calculate the power level, which is determined by KT times the bandwidth gives us our total noise power, which is sigma squared. and We can find our actual noise from that. More on that later, though. Now, I want to just remind you a little bit about filters, because there's one aspect that's a little bit not intuitive unless you think about it. All filters have a fractional bandwidth. And this fractional bandwidth tends to be characteristic of the filter type. That means if I'm building it out of inductors and capacitors, I'm likely to be able to achieve a certain filter 
bandwidth. If I do it with surface acoustic waves, I'll probably get another filtered bandwidth. But whether I build it at 1 gigahertz or 10 gigahertz, typically the fractional bandwidth is the same. So the relative bandwidth stays constant. And it doesn't change much with the center frequency. The key here is the absolute bandwidth does. So if the relative bandwidth stays the same, if I reduce the center frequency, the actual absolute bandwidth also has to reduce. Thus, if we lower the center frequency of our filter, we get a narrower absolute bandwidth. And that's the whole point. If we do our filtering at RF frequencies, we're going to have a really wide absolute bandwidth because our carrier is very high in frequency. If we can translate that signal to a much lower frequency, we can build a filter that has the same fractional bandwidth, but the absolute bandwidth is much more narrow. And that helps us out for getting rid of undesired signals, for selecting our channel, and as we've seen, also for reducing the noise we're going to see in our receiver. So getting the absolute minimum bandwidth is really a key objective in building a receiver.